Hello, good evening and welcome once again to In The Know brought to you by The Racing Post and Coral. It's Friday night, my name is Ross Briley and uh, well, my flat season is almost over uh, but uh, we've still got another month to go, if that makes sense. <laughs> we've got plenty of action for you uh, on Saturday afternoon but uh, we've still got a, a few uh, uh, fascinating races to, uh, to close out the, uh, the season as they start to dovetail uh, with the jumps returning at Chepstow as well over the course of this weekend. Uh, but you know uh, that the, the summer is definitely over uh, as you can barely see uh, the, uh, the last couple of races at York and Newmarket. The ground has gone very, very soft indeed. Uh, but in theory, fingers crossed, that makes it a little bit easier to narrow down the field uh, for uh, uh, tomorrow's racing. And there, there really are some fields, aren't there? Especially in the Cesaro, which of course, uh, normally you need a, a three-mile hurdler at the best of times. Never mind when the ground uh, gets as bad as it has at, uh, at Newmarket. We've also got future uh, champions uh, weekend continuing as well with uh, three two-year-old races uh, tomorrow, including, of course, uh, the Dewhurst uh, and another look at City of Troy uh, in slightly different conditions of course uh, than he would have experienced albeit it wasn't particularly nice on the July course uh, when he bolted up earlier on in the year. Uh, we've also got some fun and games over at York as well. Coral sponsored the entire car and we'll be having a look at three of the races uh, from that meeting uh, and of course it is as ever live and interactive. Chat box is right in front of me. Good evening to Chris Graham, uh, to, uh, to No Pattaya for Shannon, uh, Vicky Haynes and Cheese Welcome back to Cheese. <laughs> Go. <laughs> and, uh, yes, OK. Uh, also welcome back to our uh, very own uh, Christopher Columbus. Uh, back from discovering the Americas uh, uh, for, uh, for the second time. Uh, it's Mr Paul Keeley. How are you doing, buddy? Yeah, good. Good. Back from America. Thoroughly enjoyed myself. Didn't enjoy coming back early because I've... I got involved today, uh, and yeah, soft ground should make things easier, didn't it? I got loads of amazing prices today, and they all sank without trace, every mm. single one of them. Lovely stuff, yeah. So, well, yeah, great return. Really looking forward to tomorrow. Yeah, you need to go back to your uh, your Belmonts and your uh, your Santa Anitas then. Did you? Did you? Well, uh, you were all over the place, weren't you? Uh, I was all over the place. Yeah, I started in North Carolina, went to Washington, went to. Nashville, Atlanta, New Orleans, and finished up in t on a farm in Texas for the final week. Yeah, good fun. Never went racing. No? No. I mean, you have enough of that over here, don't you, to be fair? Yeah, exactly, yeah. And, it, and it's all just round. Yeah. It's, just, it's all just one circle, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. There, so. I can't stand American racing anyway. I've, I've made that plain over the years. Yeah, but you're coming in for the Breeders' Cup show? No, uh, I'm no. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, lovely to have Paul Keeley back in the studio. I'd almost forgotten what he looks like. Uh, but uh, we've also got another uh, face in the studio as well. The best thing to come out of Rochdale since... The best thing to come out of Rochdale, uh, I think. Uh, the only thing to come out of Rochdale, potentially, John Hill. Thank you. That's a great intro. Who else has, What else has come out of Rochdale? Oh, we had plenty of people out of Rochdale over the years. Um, Lisa Stansfield. Lisa Stansfield. She's Stansfield, still walking yeah. around the world looking for a baby. She's still going as Lisa. Yeah, bringing yeah. Bringing out albums. Um, I think I saw her at the, uh, the front earlier. That's still, yeah, you so. may well have done, yeah. Bill Oddie, the old bird watcher. Right. He's from Rochdale, yeah. We've got a few, but not many. Anna Friel. And a free yes. All right, yes. Okay. Oh, you Brooks Science Finest. Yeah, Brooks Science Finest. Yeah, I've Brooks Science Finest. Yeah. I've actually not heard of some of the others on here. You wouldn't have done, no, I wouldn't have thought you would no, do. I'm it's not. normally bad news coming out of Rochdale rather than good news, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. if you've kept up with the news of the last few years. But look, you know, we uh, live in Hobart. We'll, we'll produce some stars of the future out of the town. And, you know, you've still got time yet, mate. <laughs> you know, there is still time. You're yeah, still hopefully I'll put a winner to up today and that'll put me up right up there, won't it? Yeah, if you go through the card uh, on Saturday, <laughs> I think you'll surpass Bill Oddie and Lisa Stansfield. Uh, but uh, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Uh, and, of course, completing the show. Uh, here, not the only uh, racing analyst to never leave the house, uh, but certainly the best one. <laughs> Tom Siegel, how are you doing, buddy? Yeah, good. Uh, went to college with uh, Lisa Stansfield's sister, so... Might have, wow. to, might have gone to, to, to Lisa Stansfield's house once when I was young. Can't remember, but uh, she was. She was, that, That's my claim to fame about Rochdale. And also, <laughs> Bill Oddie's a big Reading fan. So I don't know what he's doing from oh, Rochdale. That's terrible. I've seen him at the Majeski. That is terrible news. There you go. Yeah. Who knew? Who knew there were so many links uh, in tonight's show that uh, had absolutely nothing to do with the uh, the racing and everything to do with Bill Oddie? Who knew? Uh, but uh, Paul Keeley might well have come back from America uh, and uh, been throwing darts at the wrong dartboard, uh, Tom. But um, uh, you've uh, you've hit a few bullseyes today. Um, yeah, you were you were rubbing your hands together with glee at the weather forecast, weren't you? Yeah, not especially, but you know, every dog every dog has his day. I've just listened. It's been okay, apart from the festivals. I had a pretty rubbish run of the festivals this year. Don't know why, but uh, everything else has been okay. And yeah, just a couple of couple of your courses basically. 
went in for me uh, and, and, and that was all good. So hopefully we can find a couple up there tomorrow. You never know. That is true. Uh, but uh, and, and you might even give us a look into the camera as well if we're uh, looking. Well, I've got, it is really weird, but I've got a camera in a different position. It's not on my computer on the side so i'm having to remember That's to look fine. to the side which is really weird <laughs> that actually is quite good because i don't have to look at you russ no that, that, exactly there you go so that, it's a bonus isn't it and you also get that lovely uh, netflix documentary shot uh, where you you know you're looking back at a harrowing event from 10 years ago and staring off into the middle distance so it's a nice it's nice i like it uh, but uh, we'll be getting stuck into uh, to tomorrow's cars very shortly indeed uh, but uh, first uh, here's a an in-depth and uh, and lengthy advert for uh, for Paul Keeley to to put his feet up uh, and you uh, to learn more about the new racing post race cards. You spoke, we listened. Introducing race cards redefined. Three brand new and unique race cards tailored for your needs. Our new and improved standard race card is the punter's favourite and is everything you need to make your selection. Get the maximum amount of information in the palm of your hand with Expert View. Cover all areas and get all the same information as our newspaper. With Compact View, you can make a quick decision on who to back. View more runners and more odds on one race. Which race card will you choose? There you go. Uh, get involved uh, with the the brand new race cars, whatever way you want to get involved. Uh, now, let's have a look at uh, tomorrow's action then, shall we? Like I said, we're going to have a look at the first five races from Newmarket and uh, races one, three and five from York. Uh, we could easily have uh, looked at several others, but uh, uh, quite frankly, we've all got homes to go to. Uh, and uh, the uh, the opener at uh, York tomorrow is the, the Coral Rockingham Stakes, a listed race for the juveniles. Uh, and Pura Sangue is five to two favourite here. Starlaw five to one, Serried Ranks eleven to two, Sketch six to one, Esquire fifteen to two, Tropical Island uh, is eight to one. Government called twelves with Bondi uh, and bigger prices the rest. Uh, but uh, this looks potentially one of the most competitive uh, renewals of this race we've had for, for quite a while because you've got a right standard setter at the top of the betting in the shape of uh, Pora Sangui. But uh, we've got loads of horses coming into this off the back of either impressive novice wins uh, like uh, Esquire or, or rock solid uh, uh, victories uh, at uh, big festivals like Serried Ranks. Starlaw stepping down in trips, Sketch uh, maybe back to his uh, best uh, uh, conditions as well. Uh, Bondi uh, for connections of always. Uh, aim a nice uh, horse at, uh, at York over the course of the season. Um, either the complete outsider, World of Darcy's, rated 88 and comes into it off the back of a Nottingham win the other day. So, Tom, uh, Porus Angui pretty much been favourite <laughs> for the majority of this horse's uh, races. This is a, a little bit of a, a drop in grade, but um, I guess the six furlongs is the, the potential for unlocking a bit more improvement for this horse. But I, I'm looking at the, the favourite and thinking a bit skinny, personally. Me too. Me too, Ross. I like Serried Ranks, and I like him quite a lot, really. Uh, two from two on soft ground. Really impressed with him at Goodwood. Took a bit of time to find his feet. I probably didn't like the track so much, but was well on top of the line, and the form is red hot for me. Beat Starla, uh, Starlust? Yes. Uh, his stable mate, Rafe Beckett, who's gone on to win a Group 3, was beaten only was fifth in the middle part. Beaten about five lengths. I think the form's really good. I think he's really good. I think there's more to come from him. I think he'll win tomorrow. I really fancy Seri Ranks. Star Law is dangerous because I think he clearly didn't stay in the Solario. Looked like he was coming to win and didn't get home over seven. It's just whether, you know, Sir Michael Stout's already pulled one out on the cards. You know, a big fancy. Whether Star Law actually runs, I don't know. If he does, there's got to be a doubt about him on the ground. But there won't be about Seri Ranks. I think he'll win. I, I really like him. I think he's one of the bets of the day. Seri Ranks at 11 or 2. Uh, Graham Rodway was. Uh extolling the virtues of Surrey Ranks as, uh, as well, just, uh, just before we came uh, on Can air. I change my selection? Can <laughs> I change now? <laughs> That's what I was, I was setting you up for that. I'm glad you didn't disappoint. So, uh, Paul Keeley, what did you make of the, uh, the Rocking uh, uh, Yeah, I thought Perth Sangri was the most likely winner. I think he's the right favourite. Um, you know, he's got pretty decent form here. Good, running against Big Evs at Goodwood. Uh, very close, uh, very close to him. I mean, there isn't. I suppose there's a slight doubt over where he actually truly gets home over six furlong. But, mm -hmm. uh, and it, and and it did look quite hard, heavy going, didn't it, uh, at York today? Oh, it looked, I mean, it looked, it looked, it looked, it looked harder there, and it looked a new market, which was a bit of a surprise, really. 
I mean, that's uh, just York for you, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, well, they were finishing tired, so, so that worried me a little bit. I can see the case for serried ranks. One thing I say is that end of season, soft ground York. You know, it, these races tend to be won by horses with plenty of experience. Yeah. In fact, last year's winner was the first one to have run less than four times for nine years, and I think six of them had run at least six times yeah. in, in those last nine years. Um, I just thought Coles have got an extra place here, haven't they? And the one right down at the bottom is very interesting. World of Darcy, 66 yep. to 1. Uh, won a novice three days ago. The form, the form of that is nothing great, but then the form in, of most of the horses in this race is nothing great. And if you just look at his form when he has had a bit of ease in the ground, he's been fourth to relief rally in the super sprint. Mm -hmm. He's been third in a listed race at, at Doberville, and then he's won. And then he's won the other day. I think. Yeah, I don't think he'll win, but I think he might. He might, he might sneak into the four at a big price. Yes, I mean similar to. I remember a horse called Nastase winning this for Mick Shannon a few years ago. It was rated mid 80s, had tons mm. and tons of runs, but was proven on the conditions and won at 25 to one. Similar. Similar. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's one of those, and he is a massive price. So. Uh, you get a bit of 66 to 1, 4 places. I don't think that's a bad value bet. OK, there we go. Uh, extra place action there, Yes, John. absolutely, yeah. And we're obviously going uh, extra place in here. The favourite's been popular. It's been supported freezing to 5 to 2 today. Uh, the other way you can play um, at York, uh, one of our price boosts is Andrew Baldwin to have two or more winners on the card. We push that out to five to one from four to one, and you know if you think the favourite's going to win the first race, he's got some good chances later in the card. So uh, that may be another way to play at York. But yeah, I like the favourite. I have to say, I think he's a, a solid one to, to open up the, in the opening race of the card. Okay, lovely stuff. Yeah, he's uh, he's got um, I think three or four single figures at least at uh, York tomorrow. So uh, Port Sangway five to two favourite then for the uh, the Rockingham. Uh, as for everyone at home, uh, good evening uh, to Ricky Bell. How are you? Uh, Goshen will win, says Vicky Haynes. Uh, and as for this uh, government call, says Jim Frey to ignore uh, the all weather run. Uh, for the, uh, the Rockingham Stakes. So loads of opinions then uh, in the opener at, uh, at York. Uh, Keels, you're going for a big price. Sneak into the frame. Yeah, angle. sneak into the frame, yeah. OK, we will to Darcy. And Tom? No, I love serried ranks. I think I think he's a good thing. Okay. I really like him for it. And, uh, and John? Curious Hunger. The favourite for me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Lovely stuff. Five to two uh, for the, uh, the Rockingham Stakes. Uh, the, uh, the Autumn Stakes up next at, uh, at Newmarket then. Uh, coming up ten minutes uh, after that uh, Rockingham uh, stakes a mile here for the, the juveniles, uh, a, a group three uh, uh, in, uh, in grade. Uh, but um, there are, in theory, seven runners running here. Uh, but uh, if past races uh, and renewals of this are anything to go by, there's only one, really, because uh, unless you're uh, owned by Godolphin, you've got, you haven't got a sniff. They've won six of the last seven, and the only one they didn't win, they didn't have a runner. Uh, they've got Ancient Wisdom at 15 to 8 here, Chief Little Rock 7 to 2, Arabic Legend 4 to 1, Orn 7 to 1, Ambiente Friendly at 9 to 1, Per Contra 10s and Starliner at 20s. Uh, but uh, not only do they have a fantastic record here at Keels, but uh, it's fairly hard to, to knock their uh, representative this year as well. Uh, that, uh, that Ascot run looking... Looking better every day. Yeah, I mean, the thing about that Ascot run, it has worked out really well. We still did nearly get beaten five lengths. He's never yeah. run on soft ground. It's going to hammer down with rain overnight again, uh, by all accounts. Uh, so it could be very deep tomorrow. And he had three months off since, so he's got... So, you know, has he had issues? Now, I mean, you know, Godolphin are brilliant at this race. I mean, obviously, they sponsor the meeting, don't they? So yeah. they get them ready. Charlie Appleby said this season was all going to be about two-year-olds. Uh, so you'd imagine that yeah, it wouldn't be surprising if he has two two-year-old winners on the card, would it? But well, I mean, he had two two-year-olds run at Newmarket today and they both won. So. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, you know, you, you can easily see the case for him. I actually thought he was a bit short. Uh, I, I thought Arabic legend and Chief Little Rock definitely have similar form claims. Mm -hmm. uh, Arabic legend obviously handled a bit of cut pretty well first time up. Um, and got beat next time. Chief Little Rock's got going to film. I'm quite interested in Ambiente Friendly for James Fanshawe. Yep. Uh, one on good to soft, soft in places at Leicester. I don't know how good the race was, and he did get the run of it, uh, but his closing switch were pretty fast for the day. Uh, and I thought he might be quite decent. It's interesting. He's owned by Bill Gridley. Ambiente is uh, Portuguese for uh, ambience or climate or environment, sorry. And his best horse, one of his best horses, was Environment Friend. Yeah. So it's very closely named. I don't know how much thought goes into these things, but well, James sure Fanshawe seems mean... to like him. Is his first group. Um, juvenile runner for more than a decade. Um, it just interested me a little bit the way he went about it. He obviously does need to improve, but he doesn't need to improve uh, as, mu as much as some of the others in the race. Okay, yeah. It is quite interesting that someone who, you know, made their money from 
real estate and property development is so interested in the environment potentially. Well, yeah, like eco-friendly, ozone-friendly. They've got quite a few of them, yeah. haven't they? Like, yeah. you know, but uh, yeah, it's quite interesting. There you go. Uh, okay, uh, ambiente friendly, nine to one for the uh, the autumn stakes. Uh, are you uh, going against the uh, the boys in blue as well, Tom, or is it? Uh, are we just are we following? Are we following trends, Tom? Is that what we're doing here? <laughs> I definitely won't be following trends, but uh, I do think H and Wisdom will win. I think he's, I think, I think he's really nice. It was interesting. Charlie Appleby said today that he was really looking forward to this meeting because his three of his best horses were running. Uh, the one that won the uh, Oso oh Sharp Stakes and the two Colts tomorrow, H and Wisdom being one of them. I think he'll probably win. Uh, I think the interesting one is Per Contra for uh, Ollie Sangster, who was who was really impressive, I thought, both times. Interesting thing about him, he's been bought by the boys. I can't remember their names <laughs> now. Wathnan, <laughs> Wathnan uh, Racing. Wathnan is Racing, yeah. And they only buy, uh, I mean, so you can't imagine them knocking on the door for Ollie Stankster and going, you've got one for us. Yeah, we've got this rubbish one per contra in the corner there. You can have it. <laughs> no, they, they would have, you know, I think he's pretty good. I think he's been primed for this. Shawari ran very well today. Oli Sanks has done very well with his two roles. So I wouldn't be surprised if he ran well. But he's got, like you all said, that him and Ambient Friendly got a bit of a step up to, to do to catch the ones at the top. I personally think Ancient Wisdom will win, but I'm not, you know, spitting the atom in, in saying that. That said, West Ham Racing, they spend a lot of money, don't they? They do, they do. They don't have that many winners, have they? So. No, no, exactly. But they'll get there, no doubt. Don't they? I do like the I'm fact that I'm not, I'm not the only person getting old and can't remember what I was going to say. I'm yeah. pleased about that. <laughs> yeah. Well done, Tom. Thank you. I think, I think that's the, the thing is when you've been studying, especially when you're studying the cars, and it's the middle of like a two or three day meeting as well, it yeah. all just, just tend to smush into oh, one, doesn't yeah, it? Of course it does, yeah. It's like yeah. I, I know exactly what I want to say. <laughs> Uh, but I, I can't quite remember it. And of course, I mean, you know, we've just had like Ace Impact announced that he's retiring today. You know, within 10 years, you, you, you remember that horse that won this race and then sired a horse that won this race and then sired the favourite for this race, all within uh, a handful of, uh, handful mm -hmm. of years. Anyway, John, you're still, what, 12, 14? How old are you? <laughs> I am 35. Are so, you? Yeah, I've just had a tough uh, paper round, so. <laughs> <laughs> Probably look. Uh... I can imagine the paper rounds are tough in <laughs> Oh, they were tough, all right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Deep into the evening, and uh, yeah, they got us working all right. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what did you make of the autumn stakes? Well, what I will say is we've got a price boost first and foremost, and it is the favourite. The good news if you fancy ancient wisdom, it's one of these where you've got to be fast. Um, we, we're making this available up until seven o'clock, up until the end of the show, 15 to 8 out to 5 to 2, uh, and that's for a, a maximum of 20 pounds. So if you fancy ancient wisdom, um, you know, pick up that 5 to 2 right now. I don't think you'll get 5 to 2 tomorrow. Uh, on Ancient Wisdom. Uh, I quite like the, the Ballador run, I have to say. Um, Chief Little Rock, who uh, was second in a Group 2 last time. Um, you know, that was on good to soft ground. Uh, I'm, I'm going to stick with a different type of blue, the Ballador team in this one. OK, lovely stuff. Uh, obviously, they will be uh, hopeful of uh, a couple of juveniles running well to, uh, tomorrow. But Ancient Wisdom is 15 to 8. Has to put himself on the ground, but the dam uh, did uh, love deep ground. So it uh, might be even better uh, than, uh, than he's been on better ground. Uh, so far this season, so maybe that five, that five to two. To be fair, for a price boost, that five to two is pretty tempting, Tom. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, I'd, I'd snap up a bit of that, like that five to two. Do me. Okay, lovely stuff. I'm just hearing. You. Have we got another six or seven price boost, John? We are. Yeah, we must mention that actually. It's Arabian Crown in the uh, the three fifteen at Newmarket. Uh, that was uh, tips eleven to ten. We pushed that up to six to four until seven o'clock. So uh, very much fastest fingers first for those two. Ancient Wisdom in the 125 and Arabian Crown in the 315. Well, both Godolphin horses. I think you should. I think you should do a uh, 20 pound double. Finally, rubble. Yeah. Okay. Can you get those prices or it's singles only? Singles only, unfortunately. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, we'll work it. on you. Yeah. That's it. Close, <laughs> close your account, Kills. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, all wins on the nod, says, uh, says uh, Cheese. Uh, Arabic legend will win, uh, says uh, Alpha. Per Contra is in my tracker. We'll stick with him, says Jim Freighter. Hartem is a ridiculous price, says Paul. We haven't even got to that race yet. Uh, and uh, uh, Jim Stanton says Hovis. So there you the go. Bread. The bread. Yeah. That's the problem with trackers, by the way. As soon as you put a horse in it, you have to back it, don't you? Yeah, you, yeah. Do. you just don't. You don't have trackers, people. Mm. Bad idea. Oh, yeah. Stops you looking at a race. Mm. The thing with Hold on a minute. I've spent my life that's telling people to put things in track. That's his old column. No, it makes you lazy. That's my whole column. No, it makes you lazy. See, I, don't, see, I, don't, I, I, there's, the, I think the problem with trackers is that um, 
putting them in and actually getting what you thought when you saw the race across so that your future self could understand what you were trying to say mm. is the hardest thing. There was a horse last night run at uh, Chelmsford called Creme Chanty when by off the track made or I made a note after her debut at Nottingham saying, you know, no looking running whatsoever, wash out for that next time out. And, and it, so when, when do I back it? Just mm. at any time? Mm. When do you, did, you, did you follow every, every single run yeah, like exactly, you said? That's the whole point, isn't it? You've got to look at the opposition, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it's um, but right. then sometimes I go, oh god, I put that horse in my track and it's got to run a twenty-five to one. So, yeah. you know, there's no there's no right or wrong. Um, and if there was, we wouldn't have to be here, would we? Because I don't know <laughs> what they were doing. Uh, the autumn stakes, though, uh, Tom Siegel, uh, you're uh, you're with Ancient Wisdom. Yes, I am. Yes. Lovely stuff. There we go. Uh, as uh, for the the next contest uh, on the agenda, uh, like I said, we uh, we might well uh, see a, a Ballydor uh, two-year-old have already. Uh, scooted in at Newmarket. They'll be hopeful that City of Troy will be uh, doing the usual demolition job as he did at uh, Newmarket earlier on the season. Four to seven he is to, uh, to follow up and continue his unbeaten run. Iberian is 130, Al Yanabi 8 to 1, Indian run 16s, Array 20s, uh, Eben Shadar is 25s, Henry Adams 25s, and Hartem is 66 to 1, the outsider of the bunch uh, for this, uh, this Dewhurst. And a, a rating of 118 for City of Troy. Not too many horses uh, come into this uh, Dewhurst with such a uh, a rock solid level. Uh, he uh, battered Hartem, of course, uh, at uh, Newmarket, who went on uh, to beat Iberian at Goodwood, and then Iberian went on to beat Rosalian at Doncaster. So it's all kind of working out uh, for City of Troy, and he looked better and better the further he went. Again, he's going to get different conditions, of course, uh, but uh, uh, yeah, Bally Doyle, uh, odds on shots in the Dewhurst, not a bad angle. However, uh, Tom Siegel, um, despite the fact that City of Troy has been the talking horse ever since that win, uh, and uh, everyone's saying he's the, the second coming and going to win the Guineas already. We've got quite a big field up against him, haven't we? Uh, the, normally with a horse like this, you get a few trainers running scared, but not this year. Well, it's the Dewhurst at the end of the day. I mean, you know, the old saying is that what makes a stallion is the Dewhurst of 2,000 Guineas in the Derby. And so people want to win the Dewhurst, whatever. And I think, I think they'll all turn up with possible exception of Ali and Arby, who, if the rain keeps hammering down like it was a few minutes ago, would be would be a doubt, I would imagine. But uh, it wasn't too bad today. That was the thing I was going to make, I should have said, to begin with. When I when I was expecting, I was expecting Newmarket to be really, really soft when I turned up and I started watching the race today, and it wasn't. It definitely wasn't. It was, it was pretty decent. And so uh, if the rain hammers down all night, then yes, you could see City of Troy maybe drifting a bit, but I think you'll... I think he'll win. He just looked like a horse that had limitless stamina and was going to hit the line really hard. Iberian was pretty good at Doncaster, but I'm not sure that was the Rosalian we saw at Longchamp or Ascot. Uh, I think City of Troy will win. I think the one that I would back to finish in the frame each way would probably be Indian Run, because uh, I think he's a strong stayer too at the trip. He's by Sioux Nation, who's... Matilda Picot today is by Sioux Nation. They like soft ground, actually, funnily enough, even though he... He, he didn't himself, but quite a few of them like soft ground. So if it does rain and it gets really testing, I expect Indian Run to hit the hit the hit the line pretty hard as well. But I think City of Troy will win. Uh, and for those looking for a for a, an outsider, it would be Indian Run. Okay, Indian Run then is a uh, sixteen to one shot, and that wasn't a great race at York, but uh, he did uh, did do it pretty. Oh. Pretty nicely. Um, talk to me about Iberian, though, first, uh, Keels, before you tell me your, your fancy, because he probably should have won at Goodwood. If he'd have won that, he'd be three yeah, from three. And he, funny. he just kept going at Donny. It's funny. I was at Donny. I spoke to Charlie, who was at Donny, and I, and I said, you worried about the ground again? Because I assumed it was the ground at Goodwood, because there was talk about him not liking it. Mm. And he said, no, it wasn't the ground at all. He hated Goodwood. He said yeah. he absolutely hated it. Which that is makes two of us. Uh, yeah, I guess that's completely understandable, <laughs> isn't it? To be fair. Yeah, I love the place. But uh, he... Um, uh, he said he's got no he's got no issues on the ground at all, and it looked like that. And he absolutely hacked up. Now, you know what version of Azalian it was, I'm not sure. Uh, but obviously, Sunway was really, really uh, well thought of before blowing out by Azalian at Asker, and Iberian did it really, really well. He's still got to improve if City of Troy turns up uh, in the same form he was at last time. But again, there's another horse who's had a minor niggle, was taken out of the national stakes because of the ground. Although Aidan O'Brien has said it was because of the ground and the fact that he wasn't sure he was quite fit enough. Okay. Uh, so, you know, we've got to wait and see. But he is running on what's likely to be very soft ground, I think. 
Uh, I, I don't know when the rain started because I was on a train coming coming in here, but the times did get progressively slower. I mean, the, the last, last race, race was pretty slow and won by a proper mudlark. Yeah, and you couldn't see a thing. Uh, it was uh, uh, it, it, it was, uh, was it was yeah. it that bad? Yeah, I mean, I mean, Novus is a proper mudlark as well. Yeah. I mean, he was you know he, he, he was was he second and first at Goodwood. Yeah, like you know what I mean. So if it, if it goes on like that on ground that's been raced on, it's going to be. It's, it's going to be a bog. So, I mean, the advantage yeah. of Choi is that the dam won the, the Phillies Mile on soft ground. Yeah, I mean, market, it could so. be absolutely fine on it. It could yeah. be absolutely fine. One thing is, I, I'm trying to catch up with everything that I've missed over the last three and a half weeks. And Dave Jennings wrote a piece about how October was such a terrible month for punters. And, you know, there were loads of odds on losers. And, and I'd have thought, why was I on holiday then? Because I'd have made a fortune. Yeah. Well, you know, all these ones getting feet. I take them on. Tom takes them on. You, you do with something, don't you? I, I, I'm going to back Iberian. I'd be a bit worried about whether Array will stay, but he's got a right good attitude on him. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, I might throw a couple of quid at him at a massive price. Okay, there we go. Uh, City Troy 4 to 7, uh, and Array is a 20 to 1 shot. Uh, yeah, we'll see whether Al you know, be, uh, uh, runs. Evan Shaddard was uh, a bit eye-catching as well, thought last time out. Lovely uh, lovely run uh, behind uh, Al Yunarby. But um, yeah, if Al Yunarby comes out, City Choice is going to get shorter it will. and shorter, John. Are, are people, um, are, 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 do you get much guineas interest on a horse like this? Or Not really at this stage, no. Look, these, these markets now, anti-pulse markets, they're not what they used to yeah. be, are they? Uh, you know, yourselves. But it's a shot at 5-2 for the guineas. I don't think I'd be backing anything at 5-2 to two for a race that's what... Um, it's Six, a funny one though, away. Because I remember say I remember a couple of people saying the same thing about Frankel before the Dewhurst as well. Being well, then you'd look sure clever after the race with yeah, five to two shot. But uh, it'll be interesting to see tomorrow if he does get get back to gain. Um, there's other ways to play. where we're betting uh, City of Troy to win by two lengths or more. That's five to four. If you fancy that, if you fancy him to win comfortably tomorrow, City of Troy and Arabian Crown in a double. That's available at eleven to four. So you know there's other ways to play. Uh, in terms of Ali Narbi, I spoke to Jim Crowley this morning, um, you know, and asked him about the ground. Is the ground a concern for you? And he basically said, "We will only know tomorrow. We, we're probably going to take our chance on it, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll learn on the job really with him. So we'll have to see with that one. So maybe the, you know, if it, even if it does come down the rain, he still will run. So, uh, but Jim really likes this horse. He's a big fan of him, and uh, you know, he's expecting a, a good chance on him. Uh, you know, he respects the favourite, but he always, you know, always saying, "Horse racing never fear one horse." No, absolutely not. Uh, absolutely not, albeit, you know, um, <laughs> on top Bally Doyle horses with this kind of pedigree and this kind of form in the Jewers, maybe a little bit to be feared. I will do, again, this is another, this is maybe a, a, a world of Darcy each way double candidate because I don't think Hart M will win. However, this horse has run twice over seven furlongs and rates off on ground, beat Iberian at Goodwood and finished second to City of Troy at Newmarket. They're four to seven on 130 and he's 66 to one. Mm. I don't think he's. I don't think he will turn the form around with those two. But especially if Alien Arby doesn't come, yeah. uh, he's. Um, I, I can see. I, I can see Hartham just plugging on for a place, Tom. Yeah, possibly. Possibly. I think he's. Personally, I think he's outclassed. But uh, you, you never know. If, if all eight turn up, and you, you know, you, you you might he might easily hit the frame. But for me, look, I think City of Troy, Iberian, and and, and the Alien Arby are proper Group One horses. He isn't. No. Fair enough, but um, we've seen some non non proper Group One horses sneak in for for third yeah. place in races like this over the uh, the years. Uh, but uh, Matt Coppin says uh, City of Troy bet like men. Uh, there you go, uh, Matt Coppin's uh, out building himself a, a a wooden horse in preparation. <laughs> uh, what else have we got? Iberian has no chance, says uh, says Dave Brown. That champagne form isn't worth a carrot, as Rosalind didn't act on the ground. I say, I, yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I think I, I think he, that's the thing about Iberian is that. He, is a, he looks a straight track galloper, doesn't he? He just kept getting better and better and better. And Goodwood is not a straight track galloping track. No, no, that's right. I mean, he's got some undulations to deal with at Newmarket, obviously. Yeah. Right, you know, so we've got to see. But, I mean, he's definitely a good horse. He is, yeah. OK, interesting Dewhurst then. Uh, how's it going to unfold, Tom Siegel? I think City of Troy will win boring, but I think he'll win easily. Uh, I'm hoping Indian Run might run into the frame, but I'll, I'll probably be watching, not betting. OK, fair enough. Keels? Uh, it would be small bets, but I'd have, I've had a couple of quid on Iberian and I might have a couple of quid each way on Array. OK, lovely stuff, yeah. And like I said, hopefully eight runners and R-Town filthy each way getting beaten eight lands into third, John, for me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I must give a, a flag out to our um, Coral Blogs. So if you want to read more on uh, Jim Crowley's thoughts on Alianabi, Sean Bowen as well. He's riding at Chepstow tomorrow and uh, Foss Lass on Sunday. Um, and we've also got Hugo Palmer in there, so a decent stable of jockeys and trainers. If you want to read about uh, their runners and rides this weekend, take a look at the, uh, the Coral News site. 
Thank you. John Hill. Uh, the, uh, I felt I was like going out to like an outside represent. More from John Hill uh, <laughs> later. Uh, there we go. Uh, Darren Walker says, had no idea this was on. Um, well, I apologise, Darren, but, uh, but here we are. Um, <laughs> welcome to the show. Uh, you haven't missed that much, to be fair. We're, still, we're just getting stuck into it. Uh, let's go to, uh, to York then for uh, the Coral Sprint Trophy here. Six furlongs the, uh, the distance uh, at 22 runners. Soft ground. <laughs> the Tom Siegel special. I can feel it. I can feel it in my heart. Uh, significantly, is 5-1 to one for this. Uh, Al Bashir, 13-2. Womp, womp, womp is 8-1. Pendleton is 9-1. to one. Apollo 1 is 9s. Uh, Summergand, 11-1. to one. Ali's Dancer, 11-1. to one. Montesib is 12-1. to one. Uh, It is the usual... Uh, group of names. So a few uh, bits of uh, uh, interesting uh, uh, difference potentially. Laugh a minute, who was just touched up in this a couple of years ago for the yard. He've already had a winner this afternoon over at Dundalk. Uh, we've uh, who else have we got in here as well? We've got uh, Hyper Focus, of course, who surely has been aimed at this race all uh, all season. He's got a good record here as well. Uh, Escobar uh, trying six furlongs again uh, here at York at a big price as well. And, and three-year-olds rousing encore and the Riddler, who were both quite well fancy for for Royal Ascot races uh, last year. The Riddler, of course, won the Norfolk. Uh, rousing encore ran well in the commentary so those uh, those two are 50 to 1 which i think connections will be pretty disappointed that uh, given what they did uh, as two year olds that uh, that's the price for uh, them uh, uh, merely a year later uh, however tom siegel i took a leaf out of your book and i looked at this race and i thought what for 30 seconds for 30 seconds <laughs> i literally looked at this race for 30 seconds and i thought i absolutely bloody loved how pendleton won at first last time out and he loves the track and, he's, and uh, his, uh, his new yard might have found the key to him. So there you go. There's my Tom Siegel special. Good work. That's how we like him. Yeah, I love when you've got 10 races or nine races a day. I love a sprint handicap because you can just tick one off in five seconds without having to look at it. Thought of Pendleton, went for wob, wob, wob. Just thought his time was quicker than the Air Gold Cup last time. Likes Yorks, won at York. Will love any more rain that hits. And I just think he's a totally different horse at six furlongs. He only went up four pounds for winning the... Silver Cup, what's wrong with Wob, Wob, Wob? So he did for me. Uh, I get your Pendleton idea. And, um, you know, you can make cases for hundreds of others, but I didn't bother looking at them. I only looked at one. Wob, Wob, Wob. Wob, Wob, Wob it is then for a uh, big drum and bass fan, Tom Siegel. Uh, Keels? Yeah, I've backed a couple. Uh, one of them is Pendleton. Yeah, he, he just won with tons of hands at third, like, first yeah. last time, didn't he? That's six weeks off. Should avoid the bounce. I mean, it was nearly a year off the track, wasn't it? But he's, uh, he's up to a mark of 92. He's one off higher than that at York. I mean, given then, his yeah, record at York, you've got to, plenty surely of good have... form in big field handicap. Yeah. Soft ground, not an issue. Um, trainer obviously does really well with sprinters, as highlighted by Shaquille this season. So, yeah, you've got to like him. I also like Al Bashir. I think, just think he's been in very good form all season. Uh, the ground's a bit softer than I thought it would be. I, I, looking back at him, I'm, I'm not buying that he doesn't really like soft ground. He's got, you know, he had a fair few mud lights behind him, went eighth on really bad ground in, in the Stewart Cup yeah. of 27. So, you know, uh, and he just got going a little bit too late in the Air Gold Cup. There's a little bit of run off it. So a bit of a I mean, more going too late is his modus operandi. Uh, yeah, it could be. It, it, it could be. But if he'd have got a clear run, he'd have beaten Subagandia last time. Rather than, but last time they ran here rather than dead heating. Uh, and so a little bit of a more of a test at this trip on this track might suit him down to the ground. OK. Yeah, I've always I've got him down a bit of a sort of a back to win later play source because either he everything stops in front and he rattles home or it doesn't and he and you just see oh there he is hmm. and he goes in the tracker keels. Yeah, I mean I'm assuming <laughs> Holly Doyle sort of has to ride him, does he, rather than Wob Wob Wob, who she landed the gamble on last time. Right, yeah, because of the Archie Watch yeah. Watson factor, yeah, yeah, possibly. Um but uh yeah, as for the uh, as for the the rest, that's a few few of them covered. John, how many places have we got? Do we have any price boosts? And uh, uh, do you like anything in the race? Uh, yes to all three of those really? questions. We'll start first with the uh, the places. Five places, I think you need it here, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Certainly, uh, uh, you will be doing for each way backers. And the other one uh, boost we've got here is Julie Camacho to train the winner of the race, and she's effectively got the two of the top four of the betting, hasn't she? Significantly. Uh, and Pendleton, so uh, you know that would normally work out around eleven to four mark. We're going seven to two, so I quite fancy both of those horses. So you know, that'd be the way I'd be playing the race. I know, I know, I know. Obviously, you know, I, I am supposed to support the sponsor here, but that's that's two prize boosts. It is in, in ten minutes. That are good. I really fancy. Like to so. hear well the well done, John. Yeah, thank you. I'm not saying it's nothing against Simon and David if you're watching this back, but 
like to give the people what they want. Yeah, so you, you do yeah, I get it. <laughs> uh, significantly, I think it's rightful favourite. You know, it, it blocked in at air last time out. You know, got the gap late on and was able to take advantage of that. Uh, gone up four pounds, but but um, three pound Claver taking off um, three of that four today tomorrow. So uh, yeah, I think a, a strong favourite. But I like that Julie Camacho price boost. Okay, there you go. Uh, significantly five to one favourite then for the Coral Sprint Trophy. Uh, as for uh, uh, you at home, Pendleton surely says Ricky Bell. Agree with you uh, entirely. Kings Lynn says Duncan Evans. Oh crikey! I mean. <sighs> yeah, Kings Lynn. Let's just have a minute for Kings Lynn. Uh, but uh, he, uh, yeah, I backed it. Sixth at Doncaster when I said he'd never been out of the frame in soft ground in those conditions. He's, yeah, will it drop right for him? I don't know. Uh, Hyper Focus, very well handicapped, says uh, Chris, and I agree with you with that one as well. Apollo 1 and Al Bashir being cliff horses this year for me, uh, says uh, Darren Walker. Al Bashir at uh, this time, so Apollo will win. Uh, but uh, the Coral Sprint Trophy, uh, uh, using the Tom Siegel approach, I've gone for Pendleton. What's Tom Siegel gone for using his own approach? Uh, wob, 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 for me. Wob, 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 it is. Uh, Paul Keeley. Yeah, back to Pendleton and Al Bashir. Pendleton and Al Bashir. And John Hill? Significantly. There you go. Um, I thought we'd all made really good cases. Turns out we fancy the first four in the batting. <laughs> <laughs> so, well done, everyone, uh, for, uh, for really digging them out there for the Crossman Trophy. Uh, moving on, then, to a, a very different proposition in uh, entirely. This is Zanowicz, uh, two miles and two furlongs the distance, 34 uh, of them uh, running uh, here. Uh, but uh, uh, and normally, like I said, you, you look to the jump strainers, you look which horse has got quality form over, say, three miles over fences or hurdles, and that pretty much sorts it right out. Uh, you might well say the shunter ticks that box, but uh, it's Pied Piper who's been well back 9-2 to two for Gordon Elliott and Ryan Moore. Uh, the shunter is 9-1, to one, Temporized 10-1, to one, Grand Providence 11-1, to one, Jesse Evans 12-1 to one, uh, with Goshen. Not so sleepy as 16s with Vino Vitrix, uh, other horses too to mention. Uh, 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 she is Hybrid, who ran a cracker here uh, last time out. Aztec Empire, who um, bombed out last time out, but looked progressive before that. Uh, we've got a smart Prescott for you, all in the shape of Golden Shot. We've got Tashkan, the ground's really come for him. Uh, Tritonic and Zoffy are both regulars in these ty types of races as well. Uh, and a couple of Willie Mullins horses at very big prices. Uh, but uh, there just isn't, there isn't another race like the Cesaro, which is the kill. There's no way in hell that, that half of these horses should ever be in the same race together, but here they are tomorrow. Uh, yeah, well, you've got the Irish Sass, you've got the Ascot Stakes. You got that silly race of good, there's loads of them. Oh, oh, fair enough, I take it all back. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a great race, isn't it? Well, give us a winner then. Uh, <laughs> if you're there's only been two soft ground runnings in the last 10 years. They were both won by hurdlers. Uh, horses had plenty of uh, experience over hurdles anyway. So uh, if you adopt that approach, you can rule out after field. Unfortunately, you're still left with a lot of horses that are among the favourites. Uh, Pied Piper, I don't think he'll stay. I really don't think he'll stay. He wasn't a stay on the flat. John Gosden thought he was uh, as a three-year-old, but you know, starting him as a three-year-old over one mile six, had to go back to one mile two to win. Now I know he finished six in the Asset Stakes last year on, on fast ground, but I think a bog, and I definitely think it's going to be a bog if it's raining like that. I don't think he's got a chance in hell. So uh, he's off the list. I did back the shunter earlier in the week. He's got he has got fairly short now, hasn't he? But you know, I mean, I, I'm sure a lot of punters who see the owner will think, well, that's not that's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. uh, when I back him at nine to one, it's, it's getting short enough uh, for me. But I mean, he was fourth in the Irish November handicap over two mile last season. Last time he ran over two mile on the on the flat, staying on really really strongly. Uh, really eye catching over a mile and a half at Gowan. Obviously, he's landed some gambles in his time, hasn't he? Um, a, a great wood, uh, a plate at uh, at Cheltenham as well, mm -hmm. uh, and a big race at Kelso. So, you know what I mean? They've landed some pots with him. Yes, he's 10 years old, but Caracciola was won it at the age of 11, didn't he? And was placed at the age of 10 and not so sleepy. Uh, I think he's, he's his shortest ever price in the race at the age of 11, and he's been placed in it three times uh, in the last four years. So it can be done. Uh, and the other one I backed is Goshen, uh, yeah. who's <laughs> been well supported over the last day and a half or so, no doubt, because of the rain. Uh, if you think Pied Piper is really well handicapped off a mark of 96 because of his hurdles form, then Goshen's running off 88, better horse over hurdles anyway. Uh, my one issue with him is when they put him up in trip over hurdles last year, they tried holding him up. They mm. kept holding him up. And all his best form has come when he puts his rivals to the sword from the off. 
And I, and and I don't get it. should be perfect for yeah, that. It, so yeah, you... exactly. It's on one as well. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Get out onto that rail and just, and, and just go. So I hope that's what they do. Um, what do you have to think about it? He's a bit... He's one of those horses, a little bit clumsy. It gets time, gets, takes time to warm himself yeah. up, doesn't he? You know what I mean? When, 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 when he's really asked for an effort. So you've got to come behind horses in a big field. You don't, you don't want to do that. Um, a hold-up race definitely cost him the select hurdle at Sandown over two mile five and a half in April. Um, he definitely stays. The ground, the ground is going to rule out a lot of horses. He'll love it. Um, hasn't done it on the flat. That's why he's only rated 88. I mean, you've got to, you've got to acknowledge that. I mean, his last few runs were either as a prep for going back over hurdles or I think one of them was after the, the, the hurdle season, a bit of an afterthought. So hopefully he's actually been lined up for this because of a mark of 88. I mean, he's got a lot of ability, this horse. Yeah. He gets no. called a lot of names for horses, won 10 times. Well, he gets called a lot of names. And partly, I think, I mean, most of the times that he's got in his own way, it's been not jumping fences when they tried him a couple of times, obviously coming down to the last. Yeah. Triumph. I, I mean, mean, I, I think I think people call him names because you start to call horses names, and I've done it, uh, because you expected more of them and they didn't deliver. And I think mm, he yeah, had that yeah. burden of expectation after the triumph, when he was like 10 lengths clear, going to the last and unseated. He was the champion of all Incidentally, that yeah. incidentally yeah. the winner of that race was Burning Victory. He was second in this race two years ago. Yeah. Like, you know, it's a proper stage race to triumph. I think he's going to go really well. Yeah, and I mean, to be fair, you, you say about him not doing it on the, the flat, but um, his last three runs on the flat have all been at Goodwood. And mm. I, I can't, again, like we said about Iberian, I can't imagine a, a track that I'd, I'd, apart from the fact that Gary Moore trains him, I'm not thinking, oh, gosh, and yeah, he's a Goodwood horse. Absolutely yeah. not. Yeah, you'd like to see him on heavy ground at Sandown on the flat, wouldn't you? Yeah, ex yeah exactly, yeah. So, but in theory, you know, he's got, He's got a, a, a hell of a hell of a straight to aim at to uh, tomorrow. That's for sure. So uh, he's twelve to one, at Goshen. But Pied Piper is nine to two. I would. The only thing I would contest with that is that whether it, uh, I was worried about him staying. But the thing is, he's he's three from three in heavy ground. I just wonder whether he's. <laughs> it sounds silly, but I think he'll stay better in softer ground because he's a proper mudlock and he'll just enjoy just slogging and on. Slogging and on and away on. through it, yeah. But I mean, I, I just think this one of his races. They do go hard. Yeah. You know what I mean? They are going to be. They are going to be going for home half a mile out. They virtually always do in the says. And can a traveller like Pied Piper, can he stay on the bridle long enough? Because he doesn't find mm. much off it. It's just that soft ground. I mean, he probably should have won the um, uh, the county in soft ground this year, you know, apart from running up against the state. Oh, yeah. No, no, he's, he's, definitely, he, he's definitely got no issues on the ground, but yeah. I, I think he's got a stamina issue on it. OK. Uh, what did you make of this race, then, Tom Siegel? Uh, loads of racers like it throughout the season, of course. It's in no way unique. <laughs> These horses <laughs> turn up three or four times uh, at uh, all sorts of different <laughs> tracks. But uh, you've got two-mile hurdlers, you've got three-mile chasers, you've got uh, uh, two-and-a-half-mile flat horses, you've got three-year-olds, you've got older horses. It's a, it's a good renewal, I think. I don't. I think no? it's a rubbish renewal. Right. I think it's a rubbish. I'm just going to stop having an opinion from here on in. Right, crack on top you. <laughs> I, just think I think the Irish is Irish has had a massive effect on this, and I think Willie Mullins' horses, for example, are you know are about his fifth strings, aren't they? Fifth or sixth strings, so what they would usually be. I mean, Pied Piper's obviously got a good chance, but nine to two is ridiculously short in a race of this nature. I'm worried about the ground for the shunter. I really am. All his best form for me is on better ground. I know the the connections always thought he was better on good ground. If it got really soft, I'd be worried about him. I know he ran okay in the Irish says on it, but he was really he was he was favourite and he was beaten quite a long way under a five pound claimer. He's seven pounds higher in the weights here. So I'd be slightly worried about him. I think when Keels nicked the sixteen and twenty to one earlier in the week, I thought that was a good bet. I'm not sure about him now if the ground goes really soft at nine to one. Uh, Goshen is just Goshen, isn't he? I liked him earlier in the week, but then the price went. And so I'm sitting there thinking, do I really want to take Goshen who doesn't win flat races at 12 to 1? No. And the one I came down on, it's not a herder, but I think he will be a herder. He's a winner of one of these particular races earlier in the season, 10th price. Right? Because I thought he did everything that I, wasn't, that I don't like to do and still won. He went for home. I out in that race about Tom, I'm going to have to cut in. I'm going to have to cut in because I can't. I can't really hear what you what you're saying. It is breaking up quite quite heavily. I don't know if okay. it's your end or not. But we're trying. Hello, to... can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, I can hear every 
first five words and then the next five uh, blank out. So just try again. Just the, 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 you were talking about temporise. Yeah, I like him. He's one of those. He's, he's the horse that wins those the races that Keel says there's millions of. He won it a good one. But I like the what I liked about him was what they, that Luke Morris set him down, what a half a mile from home. He went quickly clear. All the other ones that were involved in the finish were held up off the pace. It's hard to do when you set when you go for home a long way out of Goodwood in soft ground. I think you'll love the the, the, the ground. I think you'll love the distance. I just think there's more to come from him. So he would be my choice. But uh, I think it's I don't know. I think if the ground gets ground gets really bad, it's really it's really it's really not my type of race in those conditions. I had I had backed Vino Victrix when the weights came out, but I think he'll. I think he, well, I don't even know if he'll run if it gets really soft. I presume he will, but he's got no form on soft ground at all. And I do think Not So Sleepy will run well as well for the 11-year-old. I thought he was impressive the other day at Newbury. So uh, I think he'll go well. Uh, I think Jesse Evans comes into it as well. But I think Temporize has got more to come from him. He's up nine pounds, but he's still, he's still on a lower mark than he was as a three-year-old. I think there's more to come from him. Okay, Temporize on 10 to 1. Did you get that? We did. Mm -hmm. For some reason, it went all weird, and then um, it it's was been up... going weird all the time, which is why you thought I'd stop talking halfway through the first segment. I was talking away, all right, but it just it just comes. It's just been stopping at my end for some unknown reason. It's fine, Tom, but, uh, but don't worry because uh, next week we won't have that problem, will we? No. No, we won't because well, you'll be sat. You never know. We never know. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> uh, t t touch wood. Uh, but uh, if you are watching, by the way, uh, which um, if you're not, you don't. You can't hear me saying this. Uh, do, <laughs> do like the stream uh, because uh, next week, of course, Tom Siegel will be in the studio uh, for, uh, for Champions Day at Preview at, uh, at Ascot. Uh, John Hill, you are in the studio right now. Mm. Give me a prize for an old friend of mine, Ocean Wind, who was sixth in the, uh, the champion bumper a couple of years ago behind Fernie Hollow in soft ground, won a dunk as a handicap in soft ground. Uh, and uh, uh, to my, Roger Teal hasn't had a winner for a while, but he's had loads of big prize places. What? He's laughing. Oh, I tipped him in the weekend, though, actually. My issue with him, apart from stall 28, which is wide enough, yeah. was not the ground, but whether he'll actually get home on it. That was yeah. another one that I wasn't 100% sure, so I sort of went off him yeah. a little bit, but I have backed him. He's, he, he just, I mean, I thought he was, you know, might win a Supreme Novice Earth one day. And yeah, yeah I, thought, you know, I thought he was potentially very good, isn't he? Just he's only that, seven. Yeah, I know. I just got that little thought in my mind that he might not quite get home. Yeah. If it's really deep, that was that was the issue. I mean, but he's a big price, isn't he? He is. He's double cap here, thirty-three to one. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, we're going uh, six places here, so a couple of extra places, which you'll certainly need them in this race. Uh, the other angle, the other price boost we've got is an Irish winner, even money instead of eight to eleven. That brings a lot of horses into play. I think they've won four of the last five races, yeah. albeit Willie Mullins has dominated uh, three of those, but. Uh, yeah, I think, I think the one for me is the shunter. I think he's just going to relish the stamina test here. And uh, at 9-1 to one with those six places, that's the way I'd be playing. OK, lovely stuff. Uh, as for uh, the viewers at uh, home, uh, what well, have we got? Plenty of opinions in this. Temporise for Cheese. Uh, Jesse Evans, each way banker, says Lee Richardson. A lot of joy for Natalie Beglin. Uh, Gary Meyer, each way for Rob Dixon. The shunter for Darren Walker. Wonderwall for Paul. Uh, <laughs> Goshen for Mike Smith. Uh, Wordsworth won well last week, says Rob Dixon as well. Uh, and uh, what else have we got? Any other opinions? Jim Freighter, Ocean Wind uh, for Sean Levy and, uh, and Roger Teal. Uh, and uh, Goshen could do anything. Uh, uh, Duncan Evans says Tom's not a fan. Uh, and as for the uh, the rest, uh, well, that's about it. So that's about it. Uh, although Dave Brown says, Tom, uh, can I ask a punting question? Does the ground negate, negate the normal draw bias in this race? Uh, surely they're not going to stay on the uh, the usual side as uh, as number uh, as normal. Does that bring high numbers into it? Well, I think high numbers have done very well, haven't they, over the last few years? There used to be a massive draw advantage being up the far rail, but I think, I don't know, eight of the last 12 or something have been high numbers or something. So mm. I wouldn't worry too much about it. I do think they'll come up the middle. That's where I think they'll come, because I think what jockeys do these days is they avoid chewed up ground. I don't think they, they go on the best ground ever. So they, so they could end up up the middle for sure. OK. Right, three more races to get through then over at, uh, at two at Newmarket and one at uh, York. But we'll move on to the 3.15 at Newmarket first, as, uh, as Paul Keeley uh, sinks into the, uh, into the ground there. Uh, the, uh, the Zetland Stakes up next. Uh, Arabian Crown, 11 a 10 favourite here. Uh, Gaspar de Lemos is 130. Dan Buster, 4 to 1. Mirabella, 7 to 1. Dallas Stars, 16 to 1. Uh, and another Godolphin, uh, two-year-olds uh, here. 
uh, and uh, uh, of course they'll be hoping that. Uh, I mean, if he's good as, as if he's half as good as Gayath, uh, he'll be all right, won't he, uh, Tom? But uh, Arabian Crown, he seems to be quite well backed as well. I'm sure he was what six to four, seven to four when I looked um, yesterday or early today. Yeah, it doesn't look a great race, does it? I mean, I think his his form stands out really. Uh, in the listed race at Salisbury was was a good effort. It wasn't a brilliant race, race, race but uh, Arabic legend who runs in the first race will give us a clue about the strength of that form. Gaspar de Limos was quite impressive the other day and he looked like a real strong stayer. So I expect Ryan Moore to sort of set him out in front and uh, sort of catch me if you can type ride on him because he looks a strong stayer. Dan Buster was quite interesting on pedigree. I'm surprised he's running over 10 furlongs on soft ground this early in his career, but given he's by Kingman. But uh, he was he took forever to get going at Sandown, but was, but did get going and finished really strong. The horse he beat won a nursery yesterday quite impressively. So that was a pretty good effort from him on debut. But I think both him and Gaspar de Limos are quite a way behind Arabian Crown on form. I expect him to win. I think the ground won't be a problem. Duvalwi's on soft ground. So, uh, yeah, look, it's not a race I will ever have a bet in. I would ever have a bet in, but I think Arabian Crown will win. OK, uh, although Dan Buster is interesting. I mean, he's proper, despite the stout pedigree, he's actually a proper two-year-old pedigree as well, isn't it? Boomer and Uncle Bryn were very good juveniles. And, yeah, um, the way this horse won at Sandown, uh, you think 10 furlongs would be absolutely spot on. And Andrew Balding and James Doyle teaming up. Yeah, you would do. I mean, Andrew Balding horses, you expect something to come on a ton as well, don't you, for the yeah. first start? You can see that. I do think Arabian Crown's form is easily the best. I mean, I think Arabic Legend is one of the ones that's got a serious chance of beating the good Dolphin horse in the first uh, and Arabian Crowns absolutely pulverised him, really, didn't he? So, yeah, I think I think he's got enough uh, in hand to be to be winning this, unless something really does improve. Okay, uh, there we go. Arabian Crown is eleven to ten. John Hill. Yeah, well, just a reminder about that price boost which we mentioned at the the start of the program. Arabian Crown out to six to four from eleven to ten up until seven o'clock. So if you do fancy the favourite, I think solid chance. Uh, take advantage of that. And we've also got that double with City of Troy. The two. Bankers on the card at Newmarket, if you like, tomorrow. Uh, that should work out around the 94 mark, but we're going 11 to 4. So that's City of Troy and Arabian Crown. OK, there you go. Uh, price boosts galore then. Uh, two more races to, uh, to look at. Uh, next up, it's uh, 10 and a half uh, furlongs, the distance for a, a really good race uh, over at York. That often throws up a really good winner as well. Uh, Baybridge, uh, Ilarab, Algier over the last uh, few years have gone on to prove themselves as group horses. Uh, will we see a, a group horse emerging from this handicap? Well, it won't be Believe in Stars because uh, uh, Believe in Stars is a, a, a non-runner, but Sir Michael Stout's uh, charge would have been well fancied in here. But it's uh, left a light Yakel to be the 11 to 4 favourite. Scampi returns to York at 13 to 2. Uh, Aalto is 8 to 1. Obelix, 9 certain lad, 9 is Barishnikov, 10 is uh, Tishian turns, and it's bigger prices uh, the rest here at Paul Keeley. Uh, Tem uh, Longs in soft ground here. Uh, he's going to take a, a bit of getting. Um, and um, William Haggis, I think, was probably annoyed with Layakel throwing away decent chances, dropped him back to 10, and he said, thank you, this is what I've been waiting for all season. Uh, yeah, I don't know how good that race actually was, though. I mean, it was one of those races, I, I remember doing a preview, we, we did a preview of it, I think, and we were all saying, what's going to win this? You know yeah. what I mean? Which one was, you know, uh, so... It was more like a Ponty, Ponty yeah, race. Yeah, it was exactly. It was like, race, you know, so, 11 4. I mean, he's favourite on Sufferance, isn't he? Because obviously Believing Stars was favourite, but I would have taken Believing Stars on anyway because I didn't think he was particularly well handicapped on what he'd done. Uh, and I just thought the old boy, a certain lad, is just running really well, running into form. Um, he's won a group race at York. He's been second in a John Smith's Cup at York. And... and you know, he's seven pound lower than when third to Pride of America at Chester in May on soft ground. Uh, you know, Pride of America won the John Smith Cup this year. Uh, and his two last runs, his last two runs have been his best since then. Um, one of them on heavy when he just got run out of it late on, having travelled really, really well. Uh, and it, but he also got um, he also got carried across to his left and uh, and, uh, and the jockey didn't persevere. But he still only got beat two and a half lengths by balance play. Well, I think it's quite a useful animal when the ground is soft as well. So, so I think he, I think he's in good form. Um, he's obviously shortened a lot now since the non-runner, but I think he's the value in the race still. Okay, um, certain lad then is a, a seven and one shot. But yeah, I don't know if the non has affected the price of Titian as well. But I thought he had a little bit of a, uh, a, a squeak. Uh, Tom, proper ten furlong soft ground York form as well, which. Uh, you followed, uh, you followed to uh, to success today. It is a 
a wonderful but fairly strange track and some horses hate every second of it some horses love every minute of it absolutely right it's the one especially when it gets like this ross i think sticking with your well i think sticking with course horses anyway just fundamentally is a good is a good way to start but i think at york it's especially good that put me off the two at the top although believing stars not running larry kell funnily enough for a william haggis horse never run at york you'd expect them to uh expect him to sort of target races like this so i was off him scampy loves it loves york uh, miles better at york than anywhere else but worried about him on the ground uh so i was like keels i like certain lad titian and hartswood down the bottom but i like keels ended up on certain lad just because i thought he's the classiest of them titian can certainly go well like sure one thing i'm slightly concerned about is whether certain lad will quite get home if it got really bad uh his group race win was over a mile and one wasn't it i know he ran well in the in the John Smith's Cup, but that slightly concerns me if it got really bad. But I don't think there's that much rain forecast for York anymore. And it, while it's, it was soft today, it wasn't bottomless soft. It wasn't heavy. So I think he'll be all right. Uh, I do think Hartswood could go well right down the bottom. He was rated 99. He was sixth in the John Smith's Cup of 99, I think. I think he's rated about a stone lower than that now. Uh, back to form at air last time on soft ground. So he could go well. But I think certain lads, the class act in the race, like Heels, and I think... This is probably a little bit, you know, it's not, you know, it's not that great a race. Uh, he's been running in better races than this. I think the balance play, if balance play was in here, he'd be, you know, five to four. So he gave, he, he gave him all he could ask for last time. And so he'll do for me, certain lad. Okay, certain lad is a seven to one shot then. Uh, it's like a kettle and a four. I do think Tishin or well. Scampi's an interesting one. Like I said, he absolutely loves York. And the times he has been beaten, it hasn't worked out for him at all. In the e of course, he, he got outstayed. Uh, in the the John Smith's Cup, he got outspeeded, uh, so maybe ten furlongs on soft ground might be perfect for him. And uh, he's only run once on soft, and that was at Epsom when he returned this year, and he uh, he needed uh, his, uh, his seasonal reappearance. Uh, so uh, he's a, a very interesting horse. But Leia Kelly's eleven to four. Yeah, it's obviously significant non-runner here in uh, Believe in the Start. It's one of those annoying scenarios where if you didn't fancy the favourite, you know, uh, <laughs> we all were going to take him on. That's right, yeah. we were all going to take him on, and obviously that's come out and affected the market. But uh, the good news is we're going four places instead of three here, so that's decent for each way backers. Uh, don't forget as well that Andrew Baldin, uh, special five to one to have two or more winners. Uh, obviously, Scampy comes into play here if you fancy Scampy. But I'm with you. I thought Titian at eight to one, course and distance winner. Um, you know, taking on the top two of the market, he'd be the one I'd be playing with. Okay, there we go. Right, Titian is an eight to one shot for the three thirty-five at York. The final race we'll be looking at uh, on Saturday's card is the uh, the Darley Stakes, nine furlongs uh, uh, with uh, with ten runners, uh, and uh, Knight uh, is uh, bidding to uh, break a frustrating run of uh, of placed efforts. Uh, loves the ground, but has had the ground pretty much every single time he's run, and he still can't get his head in front. But uh, he does uh, shape like a horse who will appreciate a, a bit more of a stamina test, and it's nine furlongs tomorrow. He's up an extra furlong. He's 100 to 30, and three year olds have a good record in this race. Uh, Highland Avenue is 5 to 1, real gain 11 to 2. Uh, uh, my old friend Spirit Dancer, 6 to 1. Dubai Future, 7s. Radabag is 8 to 1. Silver Sword is 12, so Busker 14s. Uh, and uh, uh, a couple of interesting horses, uh, uh, Paddy Shark. Uh, for, uh, for Roger Varian on his uh, first start for connections and Maximilian Caesar who will also love conditions and is a very big price indeed for the uh, the Darley Stakes but is Knight another one of those um, horses who you can see winning but you don't want to back at the price Tom um, or again is uh, cause I keep looking at him he's one of those horses that actually travels really strongly but I keep thinking he wants to travel strongly but be dragged into a race over further yeah, it's possible. He could he could prefer the step up in trip. He'll like the ground, wouldn't he? He was impressive last year as a two-year-old on soft ground. Uh, don't love him, though. I've, as you say, he's got far too many beaten uh, form figures by his name for me. I quite like real gain. I thought he was wildly impressive at the track last time. I know that was on good to firm ground, and this will be totally different. But his, his half-brother absolutely loved the mud. Uh Profitable is not convinced. He, his horses so far love the mud, but there's, there's always uh, an exception to the rule. And I just thought, you know, he's the one horse here that could be a proper top notch. I mean, I was so impressed with him the other day at, at Newmarket. He won by five and a half lengths. I think he could have won by ten and a half lengths if he'd wanted. Uh, he's got a bit of a knee action, which might help on that front. Uh, he sort of hit the ground quite hard that day. Uh, so I'm hoping he runs... He run, I, I think he's got a good chance if he if he runs 
uh, because I think he's the one horse that's going forward at a rate of knots compared to all the others. Okay, there we go. Real gain limited two kills. Uh, yeah, I can see the case for him. It's just a case that he's he's at a price now where it's, we're suggesting that he he's already as good as some of these, isn't he? Like, mm -hmm. You know, and I don't, I tend to go off that, that sort of horse. Uh, I just thought the night, the difference in price between Knight and Radabog, um sort of interested me. It was only length and a quarter down on him, and it's a much bigger price. He's won both times. He's run on uh, soft, 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 heavy, and heavy ground, uh, and has always run his race when the ground has when the ground has been soft. He was third here. Uh, earlier in the season, to Watson and Fleet, he's rated 113. Poke, he was only a neck behind Poker Face, he's now rated 116, and is a is a proper tool on soft ground. So I thought he, he, he'll just run his race under Ryan Moore uh, and be in the frame at the least. Okay, there we go. Uh, John Hill, see us out with the uh, the Darley Stakes, please. Uh, Highland Avenue for me. Uh, he's got some decent form in Francis Horse uh, on on soft ground. So uh, I think that will come into play tomorrow. He's been running consistently well without scoring this season, but uh, I think this looks a a good opportunity for him, and uh, I think it could be a good day for the boys in blue. Uh, certainly at uh, Newmarket, you know, they've got some great chances, haven't they? They have indeed. Uh, they have indeed. Highland Avenue is a, a five to one shot uh, there. Uh, probably worth mentioning Dubai Future as well, just because uh, he's seven years old, say, trained by Saeed Bin Saro, so he's only really hitting his stride, isn't he? Uh, given uh, given the, uh, uh, the record of Saeed Bin Saro, uh, not until they get about four or five, he really starts to get stuck into him. Uh, Night 100 to 30 then for the Darley Stakes. Uh, we'll be getting the naps uh, on, uh, on Saturday uh, after this uh, cheeky little advert. Here we go then, uh, we've got uh, more future champions potentially, uh, we've got uh, hurdlers and chasers in the, the Cesarewicz, we've got uh, a whole host of Coral sponsored races at York, but what is the best bet of the day from the panel, starting off with uh, the man to my left, Paul Keeley. I am going for it with Goshen in the set, That's gonna it. win. There he is, an old, an old friend and old enemy for some as well. Uh, Tom? Serried ranks for the King uh, in the first race at York. There you go, so he drinks it is for, again, noted royalist Tom Siegel. Uh, and uh, John? Uh, another two-year-old winner for the boys in blue, Arabian crown in the Zetland States for me. Okay, lovely stuff. Uh, and uh, uh, following the Tom Siegel uh, approach to, uh, to punting, it's got to be Pendleton in the Sprint Trophy over at York. Uh, we'll you see you wait, next. Ross, we'll all be doing it tomorrow. We'll all be doing it next next year. We'll all be going to two at the 30-second route. It makes, I mean, it would make our jobs a lot easier, wouldn't it, Tom? Instead of doing three hours study, if we just looked at one race for 30 seconds and back to winner. Job done. <laughs> but uh, and we'll see you next week, Tom Siegel. Hopefully. Yeah, got a bit oh, of don't, you, don't you dare. <laughs> don't you dare. I've got all sorts. I've got a, I've, I've got a cake to make. Oh, I love a bit. We love a bit of cake, don't we, Keels? Oh, absolutely, mate. Can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> Put on about a stone and a half in America. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Yeah, there you go. Noted for the healthy eating over in America, aren't they? Uh, but uh, if you haven't already liked the stream, thank you to John, to Paul and to Tom Siegel and for you uh, for watching at home as well. See you next week for more of the same.